So at this point, we're actually halfway through our research project. You've chosen topics, gathered your research, spent a lot of time reading it, and completed your notes and a working bibliography. The task now is to take all of your notes and your thoughts about your subject and actually put together your perspective, which is also called a thesis, and create an outline for your paper. After that, you'll write your paper, edit it, and turn it in, and you'll be basically done with the research unit. When you're writing a thesis, the purpose is for you to, to determine your perspective. So there's a couple questions you should consider when you're determining a thesis. Number one, what did your sources teach you about your topic? Chances are you didn't know a lot about the topic before you chose it. You've now learned a lot from reading your different sources, so you need to consider what you've actually learned. Next, how did you react to what you learned? Um, how did you feel about it, and what do you think about it now? All of those questions will help you determine your perspective, which will lead to a thesis. The thesis itself should express your thoughts and feelings about the topic in a sentence. It cannot be a question. A thesis is never a question. Um, it's always going to be a statement for whatever you think. After you have your thesis, then, you create an outline for a paper to prove that your perspective or your thesis is sound. The whole purpose of a research paper is for you to prove your perspective based on the research of other people. So it's again, it's a balance between what you think and what other people have said about the topic. The outline, then, um, should be based on your thesis and have at least three middle paragraphs. For now, we're skipping the introduction and the conclusion. You'll put those in when you write your essay, but you're not going to outline them um, because those are basically just summing up all the points in the middle. It's the middle paragraphs that are going to prove your thesis, so that's what you're going to outline. The outline itself should include at least two supporting subtopics for each paragraph. So let's say you have your thesis, then you have the three points you're going to prove about your thesis. Each of those points needs, it needs two subpoints within it. You can have more than that, um, as long as you have at least two supporting subtopics for each paragraph. So the outline is going to be a plan, and it's due on Monday, February 10th. You might think, why might why do I have to do this? Why can't I just go ahead and start writing my paper? In a lot of cases, people do just start writing, um, but that often ends up being that the paper itself is disorganized. If you know your perspective and you've planned out your support, you can determine more effectively how to use your sources and have a plan for your writing. That will make your paper more coherent and it'll help it to stick together um, and create a really logical flow of your argument. Another thing is figuring out if your thesis actually works. A strong thesis will take a stand and it's often going to be a risk because a strong thesis will be something that invites a discussion. I should be able to disagree with your thesis. I may or may not disagree with it, but I should be able to. Um, it should not be something that is just what everybody else would agree with. I mean, everybody is going to agree that killing somebody is bad. That's not a thesis for an essay. Um, a thesis could be something like murder creates these sorts of problems in our society, and this is the worst one. Because I can disagree with you about what the worst problem is. A thesis should also express one solid main idea. Um, and it should be a specific point that can provide a structure for your argument. So a lot of times when people are learning how to write thesis statements, um, they will include their three points in their thesis because that just helps them to show where they're going to go with their essay. A weak thesis, though, will just be a common factor, a general idea. It's often very broad, um, not giving anybody specific points, and it might make too many claims, too many claims that you can prove in a three to five page essay. You shouldn't try to say 10 things in a thesis. You want it to be specific enough that you can prove it in the space that you have. If you try to make too many claims, you'll end up saying too many things that you can't support in your three to five pages. It can be very tempting sometimes to make a general thesis or make one that has a lot of points because you often feel like you're including more information when you do it that way, but the strongest essays are specific. They don't try to say every single thing. When you make an outline then, you want to include all of the points you're going to make in your essay. And the best outlines will also indicate where you will use each source. So as you're planning out each paragraph, you might say, I'll use these three sources in this paragraph, or even indicate which specific quotes you'll use. Everything in your outline has to relate back to your thesis statement. If it doesn't relate to the thesis statement, it should not go in the outline. But it also should not include everything you learned in your research. Most of you read probably close to 30 to 50 pages for your research. 
This is a three to five page paper. You cannot fit all that information into your paper. So it's based on your research, but it's also primarily your own ideas about what you read. So the bottom line is that a thesis is a statement saying what you're trying to prove in an essay. If anything doesn't relate to the thesis, it doesn't go in the essay. And then an outline is based on the thesis and consists of a bulleted list used to organize your information into paragraphs for your essay. You list the topics and what you will cover in each one. Here's an example um, based on the question of bring your own device or school provided technology. So considering um, whether schools should go with a one-to-one -one or a BYOD policy. What that basically means is, should schools allow students to bring their own iPads, smartphones, laptop computers to school and utilize those in classroom instruction, or should they buy devices so that every student has a device? There's a one device for every one student. So the subject then is, should schools go with a one-to-one -one or BYOD policy? And then I did some research. I read, you know, 15 articles or so. And after reading about the topic, I wondered about the perceived either or nature of the main question. Because it seems that there are multiple good possibilities on both sides of the equation. There's not necessarily one that's better than the other. So in my opinion, after doing my research, schools should choose whichever one fits their context, especially focusing on their goals and what is appropriate for their own community. I took my thoughts and my response and then I posed another question. How should schools make the decision between a one-to-one -one and a BYOD? My answer then to that question was that schools should decide on their own device policy based on what is most acceptable to their community, what is available in their community, their current acceptable use policy, their educational goals, their budget, and their faculty preferences. Based on my research, all of those points seem very important. And my paper will be pretty long, but it can include all of those points within it. So now that I have my emotional response, I have my question and answer, I can write a thesis. And my thesis ended up being technology committees and school officials can be successful with either a one-to-one -one or BYOD policy, but should consider their community expectations, device availability, budgetary concerns, present technology policies, curricular goals, and faculty preferences when making a decision. Based on that, I should consider all of these different points when I write my essay. It's going to be a lot to prove, but they all play into my main question. This is going to be a longer paper than a three to five page paper, but at the same time, it will help to overview the topic in depth. Then for my outline, I want to consider all the paragraphs I'm going to write for my essay. So in the beginning, I want to define my problem um, with a statement here, a sentence, expressing why this is even important. Then I'll go in and explain what a one-to-one -one policy is and the pros and cons of it, explain the bring, bring your own device policy and the pros and the cons of that, and then explain hybrid models, um, models that include both elements of a one-to-one -one and a BYOD, and the pros and cons of those situations. Then by the end, I'll conclude that schools should make a decision based on what fits their context. This is not a full outline, which you see on the screen here. I would have to go in and explain at least two to three points for each one of my main points here. But it shows you basically how I could break down my thesis and plan out an essay as I go through what I'm trying to prove. So your task now um, is on pages 11 through 14 of your workbook. On pages 11 and 12, you'll write a thesis. Um, by reading more background information about writing a thesis and answering the questions on page 11. Then you'll review the thesis writing example on page 12, which is very similar to the example I just showed you about writing a thesis about the technology policies. And complete the thesis writing activity. This should be done by Wednesday, um, and you need to bring it to me to check it before you can go on to create your outline. The outline is due by next Monday, February 10th.